We're now going to discuss the Java Consumer Functional Interface. In this part of the lesson, we'll cover the structure and functionality of the Java Consumer Functional Interface, as well as describe how it can be used in conjunction with Java Lambda expressions and or method references. As usual, we'll look at an example you can get in open source form from my GitHub repository in the link at the bottom of the slide. This particular example will demonstrate the use of the consumer functional interface in the context of Java Collection Framework's list interface, as well as the arrays class. A consumer accepts a parameter and returns no results. So in some sense, it's really the inverse of a supplier, which takes no parameters and returns a result. As you can see, the consumer interface is parameterized by one generic parameter T, and it has a single abstract method called accept that takes an instance of parameter T and returns no results. We're going to take a look at an example now to make this very concrete. This example is something we've looked at before in the context of the Java function functional interface. And you can find this example in the EX5 folder in my Java GitHub repository. We're going to use the arrays as list factory method to create a list of thread objects that have the names of the various stooges. So we'll have one thread whose name is Larry, one thread whose name is Curly, and one thread whose name is Mo, and that gets stored in a list. Before, we'd use this to demonstrate how to sort the list. Now we're going to show how you can use the for each method that's part of the list interface, really comes from iterable, as we'll see, and use that in order to be able to take in a method reference to the print lin method that will be treated as a consumer by for each. So essentially what we're doing here is we're printing out each of the names of the threads by using the for each algorithm. Here's the iterable interface that's defined in the Java class library. This is what's it, that what list implements to give it this capability, give it the for each capability. And you can see that the for each method takes a consumer as a parameter that's parameterized by a type T, and that's called the action. And then the body of the for each loop that's inside the for each method will use that action in order to accept each of the elements that are part of the iterable and do something with it. In this particular case, as we saw before, when we showed where the call was made, we're going to be passing in the system.outprintlin method via a method reference. And that will be what gets bound to the action that's the parameter, which is a consumer of the for each method. You can see here that we then go ahead and use the for each loop to iterate through every element in the iterable and call the accept method on the action, passing in the parameter T, which is each element in turn. In this particular case, what that will trigger is effectively calling system.out.println on each element T that's part of the iterable. Note the syntax here. If you use the for each loop with the this as the, the way you're going to get the items to iterate over, that will indirectly trigger the use of an iterator, the creation of an iterator that's associated with the subclass of whatever is implementing the iterable interface, which in this case would be array list most likely. So that'll go ahead and call the, the iterator method. Now, of course, if you don't have an iterator method, then problems will occur. If your iterator method is not implemented properly, you'll have problems. But if you stick with using standard Java collections like array list and linked list and so on, you'll have no problems with the implementation code that's shown here that uses the consumer. So that's the end of our discussion of the Java consumer functional interface. And that basically wraps up the set of core interfaces we're going to be taking a look at that is part of this lesson.